What's up guys, Rob from ClicksGeek, and today we are going to go through how to set up Google Ads conversion tracking. I know, super exciting. Um, <laughs> but you'd be surprised, this is actually really confusing and a lot of people do it wrong and then get frustrated because they're not seeing leads in their campaigns and then they give up and it's a big must. So I'm gonna clear that all up for you today. I'm gonna to do it step by step, how to set this up, okay? It's really easy, guys. I'm gonna show you how to install the tags on your website or landing pages too. Really easy. All right, so we're back into our one client campaign here. And we're going to, so I, this guy's already running and set up, but I'm going to still create a new conversion action just so you can see how I do it, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our campaign here. You can see we have our, or I'm sorry, our account here. And we're gonna come up, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you're gonna click little wrench icon that says tools and settings, drop down box, conversions. And we're gonna create a new conversion. So here you can see, I've already created a conversion for our call extension. I have a contact form. When someone submits a form on the website, that's gonna fire as a conversion. And I have our call tracking set up at, to record, I'm sorry, to track phone calls as conversions as well. This is more advanced. This is for, um, we use a third party call tracking software called call, call rail, excuse me. Sorry, one sec. Uh, much better. All right, yeah, so <clears throat> for uh, this phone call action here, we use CallRail. That is our third party call tracking software. Today, what I'm going to show you how to do is set up a contact form lead and a call extension lead. All right, I'm going to save the the call, the actual phone call to uh, conversion tracking with CallRail to a, another video because that's way more in depth and um, it needs to be broken off into its own. So today we're going to learn how to track your contact form submissions through your website or landing page and how to track your calls that come from the call extension that you set up on the campaign. All right, so let's get started with the contact form first. What we're going to do, we're going to hit this little plus sign. Website. It's going to ask you to select something here. We're going to choose lead category contact or you could choose submit lead form, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You're going to name this whatever you want to name it. Um, submit lead form is fine. I should actually do probably submitted lead form. You're going to choose don't use a value for this conversion action unless you want to tag a price onto well, how much this lead's worth to you. You can do that here. It's up to you. Totally your call. You want This is important. You want to make sure if you're not doing e-commerce, if you're doing lead generation, you want to choose one. All right? Very, very important. So you choose one, click through conversion window, 30 days, view through, looks good, including conversions, yes. Attribution model, I usually do last click. There are a few different ones. Um, I usually, if I'm not using last click, I'm using time decay. Gives more credit to clicks that happen closer in time to the conversion. I mean, you can just hover over these and see what each one, each one does. I usually do last click. If you're doing lead generation, guys, just do last click. You'll be fine. Create and continue. All right, so we're going to come here, install the tag yourself. You can see here, we're going to put this tag in the head, in the head tag of every page of your website and your thank you page. Very important. People are not doing that and it's not working because it's not set up correctly. So we're going to copy the tag here, the global site tag. We're going to go into our conversion software, I'm sorry, our landing page software, which you can see here we use Instapage. Really simple. Come to HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, either one. Doesn't really matter for Instapage purposes. You're going to paste it in the head tag here. Paste. So this is <clears throat> this is how you're going to do it with your landing page softwares, which if you guys use landing page softwares, you'll know exactly what I'm showing you here. Now, if you have a website, you just have to have your developer or yourself go into the back end of your website and make sure you install the global site tag on every single page of the website in the uh, head tag. All right, really important. So that's it, you hit that, you paste that there, hit save. Next, you would go to your thank you page. So this is the page that shows after a form is submitted and the form redirects to this page. This is where we want the pixel to fire, okay? So we go back up to HTML, we paste our global site tag in here. 
Now here's where it gets interesting. We come back into Google Ads, come down here and we take the event snippet code. Now this is the pixel that's going to fire and actually count the, uh, the this is a lead when someone lands on this page from Google Ads. And you just drop it right below the global site tag on the thank you page, on the thank you page only. All right guys, very, very important. You only put the event snippet tag on the thank you page right below the global site tag in the head tag. Then you hit save and you're done. And that's it. Not rocket science, not very difficult. It can be confusing because a lot of people don't understand. I'm just going to delete this guys because I don't need it. A lot of people don't understand that um, you have to have the global site tag on the thank you page as well. And um, there's also people who try and set up conversions to fire when a button is clicked because they don't have a thank you page. So that's something I can walk you through that too, actually. I highly recommend you don't use this way. I've seen it be extremely inaccurate. If you're going to try and count form submissions as leads, it's always, always 100,000 times easier to just do it by having a thank you page and setting it up the way I just showed you. All right, but let's go through it again and do it on a button click. So let's say you have a website where someone just clicks the contact us button and there is no thank you page. It just kind of like refreshes and says thanks for submitting or whatever. So you come back down here to your lead care categories, submit lead form, set a value if you want. I'm not going to. We're going to move it to one. So it only fires one. Create and continue. So you're going to do something a little different here. So we're going to install the tag ourselves. And you're going to do the same thing with the global site tag. You're going to install that on every page of your website or your landing page and the thank you page. The global site tag is going to go just how I showed you the last time. Except this time down here, do something a little different. You're going to choose, instead of a page load to fire, you're going to do click. Add the snippet to the page that has a button or a link you'd like to track for calls. All right. So this code has to go on the page that has the button that you want to track, all right? So I'm assuming if you don't have a thank you page, this would be your contact page. So this code would have to go on that page where the button is that you want to track. Now if we come through here, it kind of gives you a little brief, copy the snippet below and paste it between the head tags of the page pages you'd like to track right after the global site tag. Then call gtag report conversion when someone clicks on the chosen link or button. All right, so that's all you're going to do. You're going to paste this code below the global site tag on all the pages that have a button that's going to submit a form that does not redirect to a thank you page. So again, guys, if you can avoid doing this, all right, seriously, it's going to be more of a headache to do it this way to try and track button clicks than um, just doing it with a thank you page, which is, takes two seconds to create. All right, deleting that one. All right, so we did that. We went through how to... Uh, connect the uh, contact forms as as um, conversions. Now let's do call extension leads. So you come up here, phone calls, calls from ads, continue, conversion name, just do, I just do call extension. And I'm not going to give that a value again. I'm going to choose one. Now here's something where I differ from most people. Um, you can choose the length, the amount of seconds that you want to pass before the pixel fires as a lead. All right. Now people are like, well, I want it to be a legit lead. I want it to fire, you know, two minutes or three minutes after the call is made. That's fine. You can do it that way. I do one second. Now you might be thinking, well, what the hell is the point of that? Because I want to know if a, what keyword is driving an action, regardless if it's a great lead or a, good, a bad lead or whatever. I don't care. I want keyword. I want to see keywords that are driving actual actions from people. All right, so that's why I want one second. I want to fire as a conversion, and from there you can go in and start, you know, optimizing all that stuff. But I want to know. At least I, I want to know because if you set it for two minutes, three minutes, whatever, yeah, it's probably a really qualified lead because they're on the phone for a while. But you're also not counting the people who are maybe abandoning calls that you have to call back or people who are calling and they're just, you know, you're taking down their information and you're done with them in 60 seconds. I mean, some some of the lead generation stuff we do, guys just call and they set an appointment for to talk with someone later on. I mean, it doesn't take three minutes to do that. 
So that's why I want to just see the actions. So that's what I do. You guys can do it any way you want. Okay? Doesn't really matter. Attribution model again. I do last click. Create and continue. That's it. All right. Now you might be thinking, all right, well, where the hell do I find that? <laughs> so let's go move this. One second here, guys. Because I can't move this up here. There you are. All right. Uh, here we go. We're going to go back into our campaign. And I'm going to show you how to set up the call extension um, conversion tracking that we just did. We're going to go to ads and extensions. Extensions. Now let's say you wanted to set up a new. I already have it set up, so that's why I'm going to new. So you would go into your ad call extension. You paste your phone number here. Now something to keep in note, all right, that a lot of people don't understand either. I highly recommend you set up a call tracking number to use for your call extension. Just get use a third-party call tracking source or use a number that's not on your main website. Just some some phone number that's easier, that's separated from the main phone number you're trying to set this up with, all right? And it has to be, whatever number you use has to be on the website or landing page because Google's going to crawl it and make sure. So if I put a number in here and it's not on the website that the ads are going to, it's going to get disapproved and it won't work. All right, so that's something to keep in mind. So then you're going to paste your phone number here, and this is where you're going to set up your conversion action. You're going to come down here, use account settings. We want to choose the one we just made, which was call extension. You would choose that, and you can do your, you know, if you want it to be a mobile preferred to, uh, if you want your call extension to be preferred on mobile, this is what you would do for that. So let's click the call or desktop, whatever. And then you hit save. That's it. That's all you got to do. So that's pretty much it when it comes to creating your, sorry, just give me a sec. I want to go delete that. don't really want any extra conversion actions in here. So that's pretty much it when it comes to creating um, a conversion, conversion tracking for form submission and for call extension. Now, like I said, I'm going to make a third video. I'm sorry, I'm going to make a second video going through how to set up the call tracking um, via third party call source, like uh, call rail. You know what though? I I guess I really could go through one more time and just show you how to, I can, so Google does, sorry guys, I'm like all over the place today. So Google does offer a way to track phone calls on your website using their own call tracking. So you don't really need a third party call tracking. I guess, I mean, I can't, I don't use it at all ever because we use call rail, which is more sophisticated, but I can, if you're on a budget and you can't, you can't use a third party call tracking software, I guess we can, set it up i'll show you how to do that right now so come up here we're gonna hit the plus again we're gonna go to phone calls and we're gonna do calls to a phone number on your website continue name it so let's just name it uh phone calls from website uh we're not going to assign a value you guys can you know that's on you one I want it to be one second because I want to see which keywords are sending phone calls, even if they're really, really short and hangups. Create and continue. We're going to install the tag ourselves. All right, so again, global site tag has to go on every single page of your website, including the thank you page, just like we did for our contact form submission. So you're going to go do that. Then this is where it gets different. So you're going to enter the phone number as it appears on your website. So whatever the main phone number is on your website, you're gonna put that right here, and you're gonna hit Create Snippet. Let's just do 555, Create Snippet. All right, Install Phone Snippet. So we're gonna copy this code, and this code has to be pasted below the global site tag on every single page of your website where their phone number is displayed. All right, and what this is going to allow Google to do is swap out the number that's on your on your website or your landing page. All right, but you have to make sure the number that is on your website or landing page is the number you're putting in here. All right, because that's what Google's going to crawl your website and search for to swap with their for with their call tracking forwarding number. All right, and then you would hit next after you install the code and you're done. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's 
the gist of uh, how you set up conversion actions with Google, and that's all three of them now. I mean, that's call extension, that's contact form, and that's actually swapping phone phone numbers on your website using Google's conversion tracking to do that. So if you guys have any questions about that, drop them in the comments below. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to check out the links in the description. I put a lot of cool stuff in there, including a free uh, three-part video series course on optimizing your Google campaigns. So make sure you guys check that out. And besides that, I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, wait. No, one more thing. Um, I am going to make another video for the third-party call tracking um, setup, too, using CallRail. Uh, I, I think it's just going to just another. It's going to provide a lot of value for you guys. So I am going to make that, and I'll try and throw a link in the description below this video to that video after I make it, just so you can kind of hop to the next and just kind of see how I do that, too. But for any, for any Google Ads campaign you start, what I've shown you today in this video, you can successfully set up a Google Ads campaign and track all of your leads and calls. So that's all you need. All right, guys. Bye.